So today in the world of cyberpunk, we're going to check out the weapons in which you can wield within Night City. Now, if you are new to cyberpunk and don't really have a clue what's going on, my series on basics can be found linked through a playlist within that video description. I've already covered the basics to Night City, where this will take place, and also character customization, upgrading, and so much more. How's it going guys, my name's DPJ and if you enjoyed the video, hitting that thumbs up really helps me out. And if you like what you see and want to see more, be sure to subscribe. So weapons within Cyberpunk are a major part, obviously, in controlling this city and taking out those enemies and so much more. So within this world of weapons, there are three main categories. We have smart guns, tech weapons and power weapons. So smart weapons are gyro jet technology to fire caseless guided ammo at enemies. This technology was first developed in the 1960s, but was unreliable during combat. In 2077, they are efficient and pinpoint accurate. Smart weapons are tied to weapon grips and optics to accurately scan and track movement of targets. Also with these smart weapons, their bullets have the ability to bounce off walls and track targets behind cover, which is pretty epic too, and something to definitely think about when using weapons. Then we have tech weapons, which are weapons that use railgun technology, firing projectiles that are propelled with an electromagnetic charge. What they give up in terms of rate of fire, they make up for in penetration effects depending on how long the charge is held for. These weapons use caseless ammunition, typical jacketed steel for shay. And power weapons are conventional guns in the sense that they use traditional ammo, calipers and cartridges. This category includes a wide variety of weapons including polymer one shots, which are revolvers, SMGs, machine guns, shotguns and pistols. High rate of fire accompanied by high recoil is a feature of most power weapons. Now these weapons are manufactured by 12 corporations in the Cyberpunk 2077 universe. Weapons availability are based on the class of weapons of the manufacturer. Each manufacturer is either lower, middle or upper tier. The higher the tier, the more and rare expensive the weapons are. Now the 12 manufacturers are Araska, whose weapons are among the most sought after by police and security forces, which are classed as higher grade weapons. Some of these weapons are the running HS8, the TKI-20 Shinjin, the HJSH-18 Masamun. Now obviously right now we don't have images of these weapons. Some will be showcased, others will be made out from gameplays, but for the most part, we are yet to see some of them. We have budget arms people, which by the name, these will be some of the lower class weapons in the game. Some of the weapons are Blunderbuss, Carnage and Sautomatic. We have Constitutional Arms, who are a middle graded weapon manufacturer. Some of their weapons are the M2067 Defender and the Unity. Another weapon producer is the Dara Polytechnic. At the moment we don't have any names for weapons created by these dudes, but they are believed to be a lower graded weapon also. We then have Kang Tail, which is another upper class weapon. This corporation is mainly known for their firearms, especially their newest generation of so called smart gun weapons that deploy gyrojet technology to fire caseless guided ammunition, like I mentioned earlier. But they're also becoming players in the mercenary and security markets. Some of their weapon names are the G58DN, the Type 41, the KK67, and the L69. Next up we have Malorian, which is another middle class weapon, owned and operated by Aaron Mallor, a well known gunsmith in Night City. Malorian's custom weapons are known for their accuracy and durability in tight situations. We then have Midnight Arms, another middle class graded weapon, and of those weapons we see the SOR-22 or the SOR-22. Next up we have the Militech, these specialise in weapons manufacturing for private military contracting. Militech is one of the world's largest manufacturers of weapons and military vehicles, with facilities on every continent. These are another middle grounded graded weapon, and some of their weapons are the ARK-44, the Crusher, the PDU-5 Mine, the M10AF Lexington, the M221 Saragota, the RKD-12 and the M179 Achilles. Next up we have Nakoto Manufacturing. These guys create lower graded weapons too, as Nakoto Manufacturing are known for inexpensive arms that are still reliable and powerful. And here we see the Genesis 1924. Next up we have that Rose Tovik, I think that's pronounced. And this Siberian Corporation are another lower graded weapon class. And here we see the DB2 Satara and the DP4 Palika. 
Next up we have the Tsunami Device Systems, an upper class weapon manufacturer. These guys are one of the four biggest weapon manufacturers located in Osaka, Japan. It's also one of the big three top tier weapon manufacturers in the world, and some of their weapons are the Tsunami Nakolmata and the Tsunami Nu. And lastly of the 12 guys we have Tetronica. These are a middle class weapon manufacturer and a weapon on these is the RT-47 Burya. So we should see quite a few selections on release people. Like I said I don't believe these are all the weapons that will be available, it's just some of them. But these are the main 12 manufacturers. But it doesn't end there guys because there are also melee weapons. Now as of right now I think the only one we have seen is the Thermal Kitana but we know of the Electric Alpha Baton, the Spike Bat, the Sledgehammer and a few others. These I do believe will fall under the same manufacturers or some will of the guns we just went through. But in reality, if you are familiar with Cyberpunk 2020, there's an absolute ton more weapons here. Whether or not we will see some of these types in the game like bows, crossbows, is anyone's guess, but we will see. Also the weapons I did cover will be somehow customizable as you'd imagine with a game that goes this in depth. We see things like mods for weapons that allow you to deflect bullets via a magnetic field deflect module, pretty cool. Weapons are customizable across two mod types. Players can change attachments which range from scopes and silencers. They can also change the appearance of your weapon. We have software mods on the other hand which change the workings of each weapon. Things like fire rate, damage type and even the damage output can be altered through software mods. Now as we know there are weapon classes within manufacturers, lower, middle and higher. But within Cyberpunk 2077 there are also different weapon rarities, which come in a range of different tiers. Players can find common, uncommon, rare and legendary. The rarer the class of weapon, the harder it will be to find, obviously. Legendary weapons also contain special traits not found in other tiers. In addition, these traits cannot be purchased at vendors. Legendary weapons are not sold at shops either. Players need to find them by either scouting the world, killing an NPC with it so you can collect the weapon, or completing challenging quest lines. Now I will state, Cyberware in reality for the most part are weapons, but I covered them within depth within the character customization video, which if you missed and want to check it out, you want to check out an in-depth video on character customization and upgrades in Cyberware, that video is part of the playlist linked within the video description. So after all the research into these weapons I have done for this video, one of the better ones I have seen weapon wise is one called the L69 Zuo, I believe that's pronounced. This is a shotgun with 8 barrels, which you might have seen earlier in the video. It has the ability to lock onto 8 targets at once and fire simultaneously, dealing minimal damage to all targets or focus all shots on a single target dealing massive damage. Entering a room and clearing out every target with a single shot has never been easier people. So yes, I look forward to getting my hands on this for sure, which I'm not doubting is a legendary weapon, I mean it has to be, but imagine people if this ain't and it's still this crazy unique. What does that actually mean for legendaries? How great must they be? So yeah people, weapons within this game, like everything else, seem to be truly diverse. And while these tools of destruction for me are something I'm truly looking forward to, and I cannot wait to learn more. Now as soon as I do guys, you guys will obviously right here on my channel. And as of right now people, that is it for another video. Like I said at the start, if you are new to Cyberpunk 2077, that's what my series of videos is made for. So check out the playlist linked within the video description where we go over the basics of Night City, we check out character customization and upgrades and so much more. And now we've just checked out the weapons. But yeah guys I hope you enjoyed the video, if you did leave a like truly helps out. If you're new around here and want to see more cyberpunk be sure to subscribe and if you never want to miss a video upload you can turn notifications on. But guys thanks as always for stopping by, hopefully you enjoyed the video and hopefully I will see you on that next one.